This is our plan. We'll learn how to find data, filter data, organize data, control the output, and connect data with these SQL statements. And I'm not talking about memorizing random code. I'm talking about understanding the five key concepts that will actually help you get hired as a data professional. I know this because I myself was asked about these exact concepts in every interview I was in when I landed my role for $153,000 as a data analyst. Are you ready? Let's go. The first thing we're gonna do is look into our database to find some tables to start coding with. So this right here is Snowflake. This is the SQL environment that we're gonna code in today. And if we go into our big SQL Energy database, we have a few different schemas or collections of tables. A schema is kind of like a blueprint of a house. It shows you all the different tables and how they're connected together. So we can have multiple schemas for different things. Today, we're gonna use the BDE schema. And I already have that selected selected right here at the top of my workbook. So that's where we're gonna pull all of our data and queries from today. Within the BDE schema, we can actually open up our tables and we can see that we have a customer's table and an orders table. So if we click on the orders table, we can see right here, the columns inside of the table, but I'm gonna show you how to pull it with one simple SQL query. So the first thing we're gonna do is use the word select. Select basically says, hey, we're gonna pull some data. And then we're gonna say star. Star means give me everything everything, all the columns. I want to see all the data that you have. So we have select star from, and then we can type our table name. We're going to say orders. And if we run this, we are going to get the entire orders table, all the columns. So this right here says select everything from orders. And you may notice that I did indent the star and the orders. You don't technically have to. You can type everything out on one line technically because spaces and lines and indenting, those things do not matter in SQL. You're still going to run the query and not get an error, but it's a best practice to always put each SQL clause on a new line and then everything related to that clause on a line under that indented. That's how you can ensure that your queries stay organized, especially when they get to be huge. Sometimes in the real world, they can be hundreds of rows. So you have to be very neat and organized. All right. You just wrote your first query. So what happens if you want to pull specific columns? We can actually erase the star and type specific columns. Let's say we want to pull our order ID and then we're going to add a comma. And then under that, we can add another column. Let's say customer ID. And now if I run this, we're gonna have an output with only those two columns. And that's how you can pull specific columns in SQL instead of using star. By the way, if you wanna go deeper and build SQL projects that will actually get you hired, check out my Big SQL Energy courses. The courses are conveniently divided into three simple steps and the first intro course is completely free. It's the best SQL course out there, in my opinion, because you actually build hands-on SQL projects. So make sure you check it out in the description below. Okay, going back to select star from orders. Now we're going to use our next SQL clause, which is where. So under the from clause, we can now add where, and we can add a filter to filter the rows of our data set. So let's filter with the quantity column. Right here, the quantity column has numeric data, and we can see in the histogram on the right that it consists of ones, twos, and threes. Those are the only values in that column. So let's filter for where quantity equals one. And now we can see that the only rows in the output are ones with a quantity of one. The twos and threes were all filtered out. And you can do this with any operator. You can do this with an equal sign, or we can turn this into a greater than sign. And this is going to give us now anything greater than one. So all the twos and threes. And we can also do greater than or equal to. So we can use a bunch of different operators to get really precise with our filtering in SQL. But... This column right here, the quantity column, this contains numeric data. It contains numbers, and in this case, integers. But what happens if we wanna filter for text data? Look at our product name column. We have laptop, mouse, keyboard, monitor, all these words. This is text, right? It's not numbers. So we have to treat it a little differently when we filter. So now we can erase this, and we can say product name, where product name equals laptop. Let's see if this is gonna work. It's not gonna work because text data, you can't just type it as is, you have to put it around single quotes in SQL. That tells SQL that we're looking for a string or text. And now it works. Now we have only the rows with a product name of laptop. 
And that is how you filter in SQL for string or text values. And of course, we can actually combine both conditions with an and in between both conditions. So now we have product name equals laptop and quantity equals one. Now I remove the where clause and we're back to select star from orders right where we started with. So what if we want to sort the data set? We can actually do that by adding order by at the very end and we can choose any column to order by. Let's order by coupon. And now we can see that we're sorting by smallest coupon all the way to largest until we get to null values. Null values are missing values. Sometimes it can be an error of some kind, but a lot of times null values aren't errors. They're just null. They just don't exist for whatever reason. And for this coupon column, it must mean that the orders just don't have a coupon associated with them. What if we want to sort the coupon column from largest to smallest instead of smallest to largest? So we can actually add descending after the column name in the order by, and now we're going to sort the column from largest to smallest. If we scroll over, we can see coupon. Now all the nulls are at the top. And then if we keep scrolling down, we can see the largest value is at the top and the smallest value is all the way at the bottom. But what if we're doing an analysis with the coupon values and we don't want all these null values? Well, we can add a where clause to this query. Remember, we just learned that. It has to go after from above order by, or you're gonna get an error. You always have to do the clauses in a certain order. Where coupon is not null. So now this is gonna filter out all of the null coupon values. And now we can see the largest is at the top and the smallest is at the bottom. And we have no null coupon values. What if we wanna pull a list of the top 10 biggest coupons used on any order? We already have the coupons sorted from largest to smallest. So we could just grab the top 10 rows because we already have the top 10 right here at the top, but we still have all the rest of the rows below them. So it would be lovely if there was some way to chop those off and only keep the top 10, well, don't worry, SQL has a solution for you. So after the order by, we can go add limit and you can say any number you want here. You can say limit 10 and it's gonna limit it to 10 rows and boom, now we have only the top 10 coupons and all the corresponding data for those orders because we sorted by the coupon value in descending order and only kept the top 10. And you can of course choose any number here. We could do the top one to find the largest coupon value, which is $588. You could do the top 47 and that's gonna give us 47 rows. You can put whatever number here. Limit is a great way to explore just a little bit of a data set without pulling all the data because in the real world, you have millions and millions of rows. You can't pull all of those rows every time you just want to explore the data and look at the columns and get a feel for the data set. Because not only is that going to take forever to load, but it's probably going to cost your company a lot of money if you're pulling that much data. So anytime you're just exploring or experimenting, always use limit, either limit 100, maybe limit 1000, anything other than pulling in all the rows is going to be a better solution. So this right here is an example of using all five of the SQL clauses that we've learned today. Of course, you can change these up as much as you want. We can say where customer ID equals five and price is less than 300. And maybe we want to order by order date descending and we can do limit 10. So this will pull for customer ID number five, whichever customer that is, only the orders less than $300. And then we're going to grab the most recent 10 orders because we're sorting by order date descending. So that's gonna put the most recent ones at the top and then we're only keeping the top 10 most recent that meet that criteria. And we actually have no results. So this was not the most exciting example. Okay, instead of less than $300, I'm gonna change it to less than $2,000 to make it a little less restrictive. So we actually get some data back. And now we can see that these are the top 10 most recent orders for this customer that are less than $2,000. 
$2,000. Okay, I know that was a lot at once, but I promise the next thing is what's gonna really take your SQL to the next level. So make sure you pay attention to this part. So remember, this is our orders table. But if you remember at the very beginning of the video, we also have the customers table. So let's see what this looks like. And here's a list of all of our customers. It's a lot smaller than the orders table. We have an ID for each customer. We have the first name, last name, address, state, email, phone number, and gender. But we don't have all of this data in the orders table. All we have is the customer ID and we don't have all the other fields and the customer data. So if only there was some way to connect the two tables and grab columns from both tables, hmm. And this is where we learn how to join tables in SQL. Joining is combining data sets horizontally. It basically matches up all the rows and then zips them up like a zipper, Shoop, like that. So we have select star from orders, and then we're gonna say join, which by the way, is an implied inner join. There's different types of joins, but for the sake of basic SQL, let's just focus on inner joins. And now we're gonna join the customers table to the orders table. And below the second table, we have to specify how to join the two tables. So we're gonna add on, and now we're gonna specify the two columns, or the two keys that we're gonna connect and match both tables on. So the common key or column between both tables is the customer ID column. So in the orders table, we have customer ID, and that is equal to the customers table ID column. So those are basically the same column, just in different tables. And that's how we're gonna match both of the tables together. So we're gonna look at the rows in the orders table. We're gonna look at the customer ID, go find that customer ID in the customers table, and then match up the information row by row. So this is just select star with the joined tables together. Star is gonna pull everything. So right here on the far left side, we have everything from the orders table because that's on the left side of the join. And then once we get to the very end of the orders table, coupon was the last column, remember? Then it starts with the customers table. So now we have all the information from the customers table as well. And to make this a little more clear, let's pull in specific columns. Let's keep only the order ID, the customer ID from the orders table, and then the customer ID in the customers table, and then the phone number. And you don't always have to put the table name right in front of the column like I did here for orders customer ID and customer ID. I just did that for clarity. You only have to specify the table. If you have multiple columns with the exact same name, you have to specify which table to pull it from. But in my case, I'm just doing it for clarity so you can see which table I'm pulling those from. So now in this output, we have the order ID, which comes from the orders table, customer ID, which also comes from the orders table. And then we have our customer ID from the customer's table. And then we have our phone number, which also comes from the customer's table. And another cool thing I want to show you, we can actually rename columns in SQL with something called an alias. An alias is like a nickname. So we can add the word as after our column name and we can rename it as anything you want. You can rename it as literally anything you want, but obviously you should pick something that makes sense. So I'm going to say customer ID orders. So that way we remember that this customer ID comes from the orders table. And then below, we're going to rename this as customer ID customers. So that way we remember that that column comes from the customer's table. And now if we rerun it, we can see that it renamed the columns in the output. And I do want to tell you that it's actually redundant to pull in the customer ID twice because we're pulling it in once from the orders table and once from the customers table. You don't really want to do that because why do we need the same column twice? But I pulled it in to show you how joins work. We can see that for every single row, the customer ID from the orders table is always equal to the customer ID from the customers table. We have one and one, four and four, five and five, seven and seven, six and six, the reason why is because that is how we joined our two tables right here with on. That is the column in each table that we matched up to join the tables. So in the real world, you don't want to pull in the same column twice if it doesn't actually matter. So you can actually just comment one of these out with two dashes like this, and that's going to be excluded from the query. And here we go. Here's what's amazing. With these five concepts, you can already answer tons of business questions that companies are trying to solve. For example, who are our oldest customers? What cities do most of our customers live in? And what are our top selling products? Now look, if you're serious about landing a data analyst job and wanna build actual SQL projects for your portfolio and actually get hired, 
I highly recommend you check out Big Sequel Energy Intro, my complete newbie course where we build your first project together in SQL. Otherwise, watch my next video on SQL optimization. It's a perfect next step after this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.